Okay, how's everybody doing? All good? Good by the grace of God. Everyone at our cl okay, all of them. Good, good. A lot of thumbs up. Okay, um, quick recap. You remember what we did the last time? No, we didn't do about suicide. Grief and? Okay. Hmm. Okay, good. And we also did counseling of the abused, right? Yeah. Okay. So today we'll be doing the last topic. Uh, we've just chosen a few. We haven't dealt with all, but just chosen important ones. And today we are going to be looking at suicide and how do we minister to those who may have suicidal thoughts or suicidal ideations. Okay. So have you come across anyone who's who spoken about suicide? Have you come across anyone who has spoken about suicide? Yes. Yes. Yes, at some point. Uh, sorry? OK. OK, they're contemplating suicide. OK, so uh, what about the students online? Have you all come across people? Have I had some ideations? Yes, uh, Ravali? Uh, yeah, Jane, I came across many people. Ravali? Can you hear me, Jane? Hello? Uh, Ravali, can you hear? Yeah, I can hear you, but I can't. It's on? It's on? OK, Ravali can't hear you. Um, if you can put up your question on the chat right now, we can't hear you. Okay. So, um, yeah. Any other students who've gone, who faced people who, who have suicidal ideations in on the, on the among our online students? Anybody? Okay. So, what did you do when someone actually spoke to you about suicide? What did you all do? Louder, louder. They are not serious. They were not serious. Huh. So what did you do? You didn't do anything. OK. okay what did the rest of you all do? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. Tata. Loud, loud, loud. He committed, is it? He attempted. And he passed away too. Okay. No, I was not. I didn't know because I was just But someone you knew attempted. Okay. Nikhil, Francis, Nina? No? Sorry? You cried. You tried. Who? You tried to do. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll, uh, it's, it's important for us to know how to help, what to do, because you will come across at least once in your lifetime someone who's probably sharing this feeling or this strong desire to commit uh, suicide. Okay, But before we go there, before we actually talk a little bit about it, I'll just go through some questions. 
uh, just for you all, just just to just to have an get you all to have an idea about what you all think. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, suicide attempts are about seeking attention. Do you think it is to seek attention? So how do you differentiate? Mm. So, no, so my question is, how do you know that someone is seeking attention or it is a genuine thing? How would you know? How they're attempting? You'll wait for them to attempt to see. Um. Okay, so um, it is not true that suicide attempts are to seek attention. It is a cry for help. Okay, so even if there are what you explained about, you know, there's blackmailing or they are threatening or all of that, it's a cry for help. Someone is really asking for help. And that's why either they attempt or they may be talking about it or they're discussing about it. It's a, it's something that they, it's a cry for help more than us looking at it as a seeking of attention. Okay, people who commit suicide are being selfish and think it is the easy way out. Uh -huh. Jim, can you hear me? Okay, there's a lot of courage and a lot of, there's a different level to come, right? So it's not that, come again? Ravali's raised her hand. Um, uh, Ravali, I'm not able to hear you. Can Ravali, you hear can you speak up, please? Uh, can you hear me? I'm speaking up. Ah, yeah, now we can hear you. <laughs> um, sorry. I was just answering to this question of people who come to that are being selfish or think it's an easy way out. Just a minute, Ravali. Is, is it audible right now? Um, can you speak up again? Um, hello, hi. Is it audible, June? Sorry for the interruption. Sorry, just a little glitch here. Yeah, Ravali, go ahead. Um, so I don't think so. It's being selfish, but they do say that uh, just because they don't want to face things out, uh, people try to uh, commit suicide, which leaves an impact on everybody around them, including their close ones and um, everything. I'm not sure about that part. Okay, so what I think what you're bringing up is that in... Um, because of what they're not able to bear is what yeah. is why they resort to um, an attempt. However, people on the outside think it's a very selfish act. Okay, yeah. that's what you what you meant to say. All right. Um, 
There is a clear reason for every suicide usually. Clear reason for every suicide. Okay. Very often there isn't a clear reason. Okay. It can be, uh, and, and I will come to that. Many times people just uh, commit suicide as a symptom of depression. Right? Because they are in clinical depression, one of the symptoms of depression is uh, suicidal attempts or suicidal thoughts. Okay? Not necessary. There's not always a reason for depression. Depression can come, uh, one is as a result of some, it's called, there are two factors, something that's external and something that's very internal. External factors may be something that you see, like a, like a stress or some kind of a uh, uh, condition, but internal factors, there may not be any specific reason. As a result of depression, people can commit suicide. So there isn't always a clear reason for every suicide. Okay, people are depressed and can give up their lives. All right? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yes. It can be. There can be uh, certain events that may cause a person to feel a certain way that could like, let's say, low self-esteem, low confidence, or a sense of worthlessness that can result in uh, an attempt to suicide. So there can be uh, the, the... So generally, when you look at every kind of an illness or a disease, it is, uh, it, it, it has, um, what do you say, sources in the enemy, right? The enemy uses something that, all, that we are already open to and can affect us a, a great way. So if, if you are as a person who keeps devaluing yourself, the enemy can use that against you to, um, you know, bring about these kind of issues also. So when there is an open door, it's easy for the enemy to work it. Okay, asking somebody whether they are suicidal and discussing whether they have a plan or method will simply give them the idea and increase their risk of suicide. So basically, if you ask someone whether they are suicidal and whether they have a plan, you're simply putting ideas in their mind and it will increase their risk of suicide. That's what it means. What do you think? Yeah. Unknowingly, the idea will come. Huh? OK, all right. So research has shown that it is important to ask. And by asking, you're actually helping them to open up whatever they are feeling or they are going through. Uh, it's a misconception to think that if you ask them, then they will. Uh, it's like this, no? When we talk about with young teens, you tell them about drugs or you tell them about premarital sex. So people say that if you don't talk to them about it, they will feel like doing it. That's not true. It's not true, right? It is you are building their awareness about that so that they're careful. So similarly here, you are asking them. Remember I said suicide is a cry for help. So when you ask them, how are you feeling? Do you feel like killing yourself? Have you had thoughts or plans of suicide? It actually helps them to open up. Okay, so asking about suicide uh, is actually a good thing. It is important to ask about that. Um, okay. People who talk about suicide won't do it. Okay. So you cannot, you may not be able to really, like there may be certain times that people do keep saying, okay, I'm going to go die. I will go die. You do this, I'll go die. Right? But there can be chances that they may act on it. They may act on it. Impulsively, they could act on that. Okay? Uh, suicide is a purely personal decision. Uh, 
There is a manipulation. Okay. You mean the instances around can, you're saying, push them into, okay, right. So, um, okay, I'll, I'll leave it at that. We will probably talk about that later, okay. People who really want to kill themselves are beyond help. So people who want to commit suicide are actually beyond help. No. Not at all, right. And that's why we are actually talking about this because Sorry? Be upbeat when you respond to a depressed person or someone. That is, be happy. You know, act as if your life is joyful when you're talking to a depressed person. That's what it says. Okay? All right. Those are some things for depression, but I want to get back to... Okay. So uh, just a couple of terms that we need to understand, OK? One is, yes, suicide, which is the act of killing oneself, all right? That's what intentionally, that is, someone intentionally wants to die. The uh, parasuicide attempt is uh, a person can cause injury or harm to themselves, but uh, it's non-fatal. That is, it's it doesn't it doesn't come to a place of dying. Like they may take some kind of medication or they may inject themselves with certain drugs so much so that it's not a, it's not a, a, a pure suicidal attempt. It's called a parasuicidal attempt, which is non-fatal. That is, they know that nothing's going to happen, but nevertheless, they attempt some kind of ingestion or something that causes some kind of an injury to self. Okay? Self-harm. Self-harm is the deliberate attempt to harm or destroy the body with actually no intent of killing. That is maybe cutting, uh, you know, beating oneself, injuring one body, but not with an intent to kill, but because to release or relieve pain. Okay. So let's just look quickly at what is suicide. It is the second leading cause of death. Um, like we said, it's the act of taking one's own life. Many people who commit suicide commit because of depression or some kind of a mental disorder. All right. So it's a good percentage. It's almost like a 60% of people actually commit suicide when they are depressed. That is clinical depression or mental disorders like too much of alcohol, too much of substance, uh, drugs. All of that can lead to um, a suicidal attempt. Okay. So major reasons for suicide is one, major psychiatric illness, which is, like I said, depression or even schizophrenia can actually cause a person to commit suicide. Uh, drug use or substance, that is alcohol, drugs, all of that can lead a person to commit suicide. Impulsivity, that is, you know, doing things without thinking, taking spot on decisions, uh, that is another reason why people commit suicide or they f feel that they're not able to cope at all with the kind of struggles that they're going through. Okay? There can be significant losses. That is, uh, you know, maybe a loss of a job, loss, uh, loss of a significant loved one, maybe other kind of things that um, they've attached themselves to. And lastly, one of the reasons for suicide is a cry for help, getting someone to see what they are feeling and what they are struggling for. Okay, So here are some warning signs of suicide. How do you know um, someone would probably commit or you know are showing symptoms, are showing signs of suicide? Now, remember that please don't just take one of these behaviors and say, OK, you have this. That means you're going to commit suicide. That's not the point, right? You're looking at a more collective number of um, items in this. So. Uh, one is, uh, like we said, depression. So in depression, some of the symptoms of depression are here. The negative view of self, a sense of hopelessness or no hope for the future, feeling alone, being isolated, uh, drastic changes in mood and behavior, um, and also self-harm, 
like cutting behaviors. So all of these are also symptoms of depression. So someone may have depression, but will have these symptoms. Additionally, you could see that there is, um, uh, you know, they keep talking about how they are a burden to others. That, um, you know, that, that they're, they're an extra mouth to feed or that people, they are a person uh, who the entire family or the entire whatever community can live without. Okay, They may frequently talk about death, keep, keep talking and discussing about death. Um, they may engage in risky behaviors like they may go on fast car drives, uh, you know, doing things that are that are risky, like um, uh, maybe injecting very many drugs, swallowing many many um, medication, or you know, doing some kind of uh, risky sports that could without without safety harnesses. All of that are risky behaviors when they engage in risky behaviors. Other things that you could see is when they give things away, maybe when they give their possessions away, when they write their will when they're writing their assets to somebody, all of that could be indications. Uh, making funeral arrangements, right? So they are making plans to ensure that once they die, all the funeral, all of that are set. So these are some warning signs. Even suicidal threats is again a warning sign of someone who can uh, have an attempt of suicide, okay? Okay. So how do you make uh, an assessment of, of someone who's committed, commit, who may want or who may think of suicide? Sorry, my system is stuck. OK. Right. So here are some factors or uh, uh, what we call as a risk assessment. You basically find out how likely someone may commit suicide, okay? So the if you look at the acronym of, of it, it's called the sad person. Right? So the first thing that you look at is sex. Generally, males are much more prone to commit suicide than women are, all right? So if they are a male, there's a greater risk. Ages between 19 and 45, okay? These are probably the times that are the most stressful times of a person's life. So that makes them more susceptible to suicide. D, the presence of depression. If they have clinical depression, that again becomes another factor for suicide. P is previous suicide attempts. If they have attempted any time before, the likelihood that they will attempt again is kind of great. E is ethanol, which is alcohol or other substance use. Does the person use alcohol or other drugs as a sense of coping? R is rational thinking loss. They are not able to think rationally, think logically, not able to see hope. Even sometimes they may have everything set for them. They may have a job, they may have family, they may have all things well, but yet they are not able to think logically, think rationally. That's R. S is social support lacking. There aren't people around them that's there as their network or their or support. That, again, can be another factor. O, organized plan. They have a plan. They know when to die, how to die, what means they have to use, when they're going to do it, which place. They have a huge plan. And N is generally if they're unmarried or single, when they do not have a spouse, it again, a spouse or family that causes greater factors for a suicidal attempt. Did you follow this? Yes? Yeah? Okay. Any questions up till now? Okay. So we will we'll quickly look at how do we identify, how to identify someone who has uh, a suicidal attempt. I'm going to show you a video. I don't know if this is going to, uh, if you all will be able to hear it, uh, but I'm going to try. Now this is, can you all hear it? You can put on the...
Can the students hear it? Could you hear it when I played it? Oh, is it? No. Okay, they can't hear. So, what's the way for us to hear? It's on. It's on the PPT. Okay, then I'll just share the video later. No, it's on. It's embedded on my PPT. Okay, I'll do one thing. I'll put this up on the stream. You all can watch it later. Okay. So there'll be two videos. One is uh, just to understand a little bit about what depression is, and the other video will be on how to how to talk to someone who is suicidal okay so we'll we'll probably i i can maybe share it at a later time on the stream okay all right so we'll what we're looking at is to find out again how do you identify how do you understand what is it that you can see uh, as uh, issues or as changes that uh, that have that that may, that show you that a person is suicidal okay so here are some quick divided into four there are certain physical symptoms there are certain behaviors thoughts and certain feelings okay now the thoughts and the feelings are things you can't see but things that you may need to ask things that you can find out as you're talking to them so some of the physical symptoms that you may notice is they have uh, uh, difficulty sleeping. They feel a sense of tiredness. And you, will, you can see that they may not be eating and actually speaking about how they feel so run down. They feel sick. Okay? Certain behaviors that will be noticeable is they will be withdrawn from others. Now, this is in general. There can be exceptions even to this. Okay, People may be normally... Uh, you may be noticing people who are normal, but yet could attempt, all right? But this is in general. A large percentage of people will show these symptoms. Um, they don't get things done. They stop having interest in enjoyable activities. There is a difficulty in actual concentration, in paying attention, in doing what they are generally doing in life, okay? There may be increased alcohol or drug use. At, at a point of time. The thoughts that they may be thinking is generally self-depreciating or uh, 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 thoughts that are very condemning, like nothing good ever happens to me, my future is bleak, I'm worthless, I'm a failure. These are all negative views or negative thoughts that they may be engaging in. The predominant feelings would be feeling sad, being very overwhelmed, uh, frustrated, feeling uh, irritable, uh, uh, feeling a sense of depression. These are all symptoms that you will notice. Okay. Now, if you look at their negative views, it generally will follow three areas. The negative view of themselves, negative view of the world, of others, and negative view of the future. Okay. So what is negative view of oneself? I am not good enough. I am worthless. I am inadequate. Negative view about the world, uh, you know, nobody loves me or nobody thinks I'm worth it. Everyone, it would be better that I didn't live because everyone will be happy because I feel so worthless. I am worthless. I can't do anything. I'm not good for those others. And 
negative view about the future. I can never do anything right. Nothing good is going to come about my life. So generally, the views that they have about themselves, others, as well as the world comes from a negative place of mind. Okay? Clear? Right? Okay. Um, so what is it that you would notice as suicidal behavior? When there is excessive sadness or moodiness, they always actually talk about wanting to die or wanting to kill oneself. Okay, they may talk about it and, you know, they say how fed up they are. You know, I wish, I wish I could just die or I wish while I was driving I could just die or, you know, I wish I didn't wake up in the morning. So these are all negative talks about, uh, one, about oneself, about how they're feeling. Any kind of a trauma, recent trauma, or life crisis that has happened. Maybe it's something that is significant loss that's happened. Feeling hopeless or having no reason to live. There isn't any, even despite the fact that there may be other things around, like there may be children, they may be having a job, they may be going through something significant, they feel there is no reason to live. Okay, feeling trapped, having that sense of unbearable pain, uh, feel that they're a burden, to others, we spoke about this, making preparations for their uh, uh, suicide. I remember one person who, you know, who committed suicide, he, uh, he withdrew money from the bank, put it into a kitchen box so that the family would have enough for the funeral, you know, because that's a box I think the wife generally opens for, uh, for tea time snack. And that evening, so when everyone went out, he committed suicide. And, you know, there were some of these things that were already done. He had written up a will. He had sold some property, kept the money in the bank. So all of this came in through a whole lot of preparation as a result. So making those preparations, okay? Uh, feeling anxious, agitated, or sometimes behaving recklessly. There can be um, uh, problems with their sleep. Uh, they may be more isolated. They may also be very irritable, show anger, show rage, uh, general seeking revenge. So there are many of these symptoms that you may notice. Like I said, all because you notice two or three of these symptoms, it doesn't mean that you make a blanket understanding that they may want to commit suicide. And that's why you need to ask. That's why you need to always have conversations with people. Okay. All right. Now, um, what do you do when you're actually talking to someone? There are some things you need to understand. Okay. And this is what we call as the components for a, let's say, a, let's say a, a, a conversation. How do you have a suicidal conversation with someone? The first thing is find out the risk factors. What are the risk factors we spoke about earlier? What did we say the risk factors are? Sad person. Yeah. So you're, you're trying to figure out how many of these fit into this category. Are they uh, single? Uh, you know, are they having, uh, what age group are they, are they in? Do they have depression? Do they have a social support? Are they on substance use? All of this is what you will check to find out. Okay, that's what we mean by suicide risk factors. Then the, the fact that their idea, the you know suicidal ideation, it can either be passive or it can be active. What do you mean by passive and active? What do you understand by the meaning of passive and meaning of active? Correct. They're not passive is where the thought may be there, but there isn't anything that they're doing towards it. But active is there is a, yeah, they are planning, they're organizing something towards that. So that's something you understand, whether it's passive or whether it is active. How do you, how would you question someone to know if it's active or passive? Will you say, are, is it, are you actively thinking about it or are you passive? What would you say? Okay, uh, what else? 
what are you doing when you have those thoughts okay there are many ways to ask ah so ask how you can actually ask uh, have you devised a plan is there a plan that you have have you thought about a plan <laughs> okay so you, what you want to know is whether they have a plan right so okay this has been thoughts what uh, have you done anything to further that to think so that's what it, it's important to ask that they'll say yeah maybe i did two three things something so you know that it is a more active phase and an active one is uh, what do you say more uh, I, i won't say it is more dangerous but it's it's definitely something that is playing on their minds greater but the passive one could become very impulsive within no time they may just try and do something without actually thinking about consequences okay what happened it's not as you know really Thanks. no both will be but passive you may not know yes they they're not thinking like for example an active person may like google and see which is the best way to die right or they may look at okay if i choose this what could be the consequences that happen they're actually researching all of that someone passively may just at the at the spur of the moment may just do something without actually thinking how much uh, it could affect them if it didn't if it didn't succeed and all of that they may not think about all of that that's what i meant by passive could tend to be that you know they're trying to attempt but not really have the mindset to do that but they're doing it at the spur of the moment and it can uh, cause worse of problems they may not die but they it can they can have other kind of complications okay all right yeah then a suicide plan do they have a significant plan how they doing it when they doing it what they doing it so um there was again there was this uh, person that i was seeing he had such a, a, a an elaborate plan that he wanted to do it at a certain place okay so he had devised the place where he wanted to do it he had uh, kept aside the money he had put the date okay so he had he was wrapping up his work accordingly so that how that's how serious the plan was and while we were talking i did understand that it was it was quite elaborate the plan so okay so then i'll, I'll tell you how how do we minister when we do understand that there there is a significant plan and the fourth is intent what is their intent is the intent just to you know i want to kill myself or is it no i just want to you know by by doing this i just want to escape for a certain period of time or i just want to sleep uh, so what is the intent of of that so these are certain things that you will need to maybe ask ensure that you are keeping these uh, communications open okay um we won't go through that all right so if they have suicidal ideations the important thing is to ask directly okay um it's good to use the word suicide when asking about suicide like you don't have to say do you want to do something right be direct or do you feel like harming yourself remember harming yourself is very different from suicide harming yourself is you must have known of how people when they are very very emotionally overwhelmed they may take some like blades or uh, you know small kitchen knives and just just superficially slash themselves that's not to kill themselves it is actually to release the pain that they are feeling okay so it's not a very co good coping mechanism but nevertheless that's something that they have done all right so ask about suicide um like like this is some one way that you can ask i ask everyone i meet with about suicide and so i'm going to ask you have you had any thoughts about death or about suicide so you ask directly or i've read that between 10 to 50% of teenagers have thought about suicide is that true for you okay so directly talking and directly asking 
All right? Okay. Now, if they do say yes, what would you say next? Why? So if they do say yes, students online, what would you say next? Praise the Lord. Eh? Uh, do you have any plans? Uh, maybe um, try to understand uh, for how long they Before you that. ask a question, what do you do? Think back at your counseling skills. Yes, Ravali. Uh, Jean, Jean, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, so I was uh, I was saying that uh, maybe ask them since how long uh, you know for how long they've been getting these kind of thoughts if they say yes uh, that they uh, wanted to commit suicide or yeah uh, if they're thinking about suicide it's been how long uh, they've been in this kind of okay, thoughts. So these are these are all. These are all questions towards finding out. But I'm saying before all of that, yes, empathize. How do you do that? Remember, we spoke, up, spoke about responding to feelings. Someone is telling you that they, are, they want to die, and you're going ahead and finding out the plan, which is a good thing. It's important. But what do you do before that? Okay. So what will you think about? Okay. So, so one sec. So, Anand, you've gone way ahead. You've gone way ahead. I'm talking about someone is just saying, I feel suicidal. Or you're saying, you know, do you want, uh, you've asked that question, they said yes. So, how will you respond there? Go back to class five, six, huh? Um, we acknowledge the feelings. Um, so, what will you say? You shouldn't judge them. Say that again. You might. Think of this. Yes. Yeah. Right. Like, for example, I can't imagine the pain that you may be going through that made you think about this. Right. You may be going through. Yeah, that we have we have understood what they're going through. That's extremely important. Never lose sight of that when you're talking to someone who is either depressed or probably suicidal. Okay, so uh, don't forego that. It is important to uh, to get that. So next that you would do, and which which I think most of you said, is explore the frequency, duration, and intensity of the thoughts. How frequent? How many times has this happened? From how long? And how intense is it? Right? And what all, what all has, how many, uh, uh, how long has this intensity uh, um, been there? Okay? So that's, that's, again, very important to ask. Then you need to assess the plan, which means you are talking very specifically about the plan. Can you tell me more about how? you have thought about doing it, right? This is very important because you're helping them articulate. And in most cases, from what I have seen, mostly people actually do talk. People will actually tell you. That is, if they feel uh, not unjudged, if they're not feeling judged, they will tell you. If you are open to listen, they will actually tell you. But if you... If you close on them, so how can you think of something like that? Don't be silly. Don't be stupid. Shake yourself out of it. Then they may not really 
bring about this. But you need to assess the plan. So specifics of the plan. What are they going to do? Lethality of the plan. How are they trying to kill themselves? And are they using a gun? Are they using a rope? Are they using uh, injectables? Are they using medication? Are they going to go under the train? What is the, how lethal can it be? All right. Availability of the means. Is this something that they've already bought and kept? Right. The rope or the, you know, whatever material they have. And how close is social support? Proximity means the closeness of other people. Are there other people in the house? Are there other people around them that can make this plan harder or easier? Right. So this is something that you will need to check. Specifics of the plan, lethality, that is, uh, would they, uh, you know, how, uh, how potent or how lethal, you know, the meaning of lethal, that if, Whatever means they're using, is it, is it a quick thing to die? Uh, availability, and lastly, proximity of the support system that there is. OK? All right, we'll stop here. Any questions here? And then maybe the next class, we'll talk about how we can actually minister. Any thoughts here? Any questions? OK. Uh, let's stop for a 10-minute break. We'll come back at 11 o'clock.